Hi guys, it's Adam and uh, yes, it is Thursday Talks. I think we're on episode 8 now, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to have a look before I upload it so I can put it in the title. Um, yeah, so we've got quite a few questions um, and I'd just like to say thanks for everyone. Um, we are we are nearly at 250 subscribers now, which is just crazy. Um, I think it was only about two months ago, two and a half months ago, I did my 100 subscriber special. So that's just, just crazy, really. Um, and if I have to stop the video, pause the video, um, it's because I'm waiting for the UPS guy for an FBA collection. I did another shipment yesterday. I believe it was 55, 56 items, something around there. So not like huge, but uh, just a nice little one just to tide me over until I can uh, get some more items really and whack them up there. Um, got a lot more unique items in there. There are a lot more um, higher value items. As I said in previous videos, I'm not sending anything up below six quid. So um, there's a lot more high value items. The sealed PTK VHS Phoenix Knights, that's 40. Um, there's a sealed board game, which is 40. There's about four or five things in there that are, that are 40 quid. Um, there's about four or five that are 30 quid. And the rest are all like sort of 10 quid and up. But I think there's about two things in there that are below 10 quid. So um, I'm quite happy with that. Um, and hopefully it'll continue the, uh, much of the same, really. Um, just because then I can get that higher higher profit and then cash flow will be a bit better as well. Um, for most of the items up there that, are, or that will be up there um, that are 30 or 40 quid, I paid no more than 2 quid for, so there should be really good profit in there. Um, of course fees are quite high, but um, e even with the fees it's going to be still nice profit. Um, so yeah, I will crack on with the questions. So JT Smith asks, um, how long do you wish to continue reselling and would you consider it doing it full time? Um, I've heard a lot on full time on Facebook group, on YouTube videos this week um, and even last week. Um, and a lot of people have been saying, highlighting the, the sort of the things you need to be aware of and what I intend to do, I do intend to do it full time. I, I my uh, goal after university is to do this full time. Now, looking at my business and my finances now, um, I would need to take much deeper, um, a much deeper analysis of it. I would need to factor in things that I don't currently factor in, like lighting and heating and you know various things like that that obviously get paid for by my mum and dad because I'm still living at home. Um, so there's a lot, uh, loads and loads to consider. Um, but I think if I can source more higher value items and I can get a lot more higher value items on eBay rather than lower value um, and sort of be finding things at 40, 50 quid on a weekly basis, which is possible if I ask all my local charity shops to hold things back for me, if I start finding um, new niches, if I go to car boots once, twice a week, if I go to rummage sales, garage sales, whatever you want. If, you just, if, you, if I did all of that, I'd be able to do it. Uh, and I'd be able to get sort of probably 20 to 30 high value items a week. And when I say high value, I mean like, like 40, 50 quid, and I'm paying like sort of no more than a fiver. And that would give me Probably, it, would, it would most probably give me the numbers I'd need and then I'd get probably another 50 to 80 lower value items a week just sort of uh, bread and butter sales and I'd, I'd, be, be, I'd be then building up a backlog of stock and at the same time I could then just rattle through it and I could really shoot up and uh, I think to be full time I'd need sort of I'd be looking at six, 700 items on eBay minimum um, or well, maybe 500 minimum, uh, and then I'd, I'd like a good 500 uh, FBA and, and then just grow that and, and one day uh, become like Tom, who's just ridiculous, who's got 5,000 or, or 5,000 plus items up there. Um, 
But yeah, it's it's a massive, massive decision. It wouldn't be one I'd take lightly. And I think if I, if I went full time, the good thing with my the position I'm in is I could stay at home for a bit and I could build up the business from home with lower overheads. And that would mean I'd, I'd for one, I'd be able to take a wage myself and then I'd be able to move out. And for two, it, it, it would ease the pressure uh, off the business a little bit. And I could, because it obviously the business wouldn't have as many overheads. And then I could build it up that way, you see. So it, the position I'm in is really good for starting a bit, starting a business. And I would say between sort of the ages of 20 and 25 or 20 and 30 uh, of a, it is the best time to start a business because you don't have, or generally you don't have kids, or, or if you have had kids, you, you know, they're, they're fairly young and stuff. If, the thing is, if you have kids or you get a family at like 26 or something, 27, um, and then you set up a business, it is really, really hard. So I'd say the best time is between like 20 and 25, because you've not got, between 20 and 25, generally you've not got kids. Um, or you, you may you may have a wife or whatever, or a partner, but that isn't really a ma too much of a massive expense because they've got their own income. So yeah, I think, my the, the age I'm at is just perfect and I do intend to do it full time but we're talking after uni which is a year down the line something like that a bit more um but yeah so that answers that question um and yeah that answers how long do you wish to continue reselling um I wish to continue it until it proves ineffective so for example the internet wasn't there anymore or you know, eBay wasn't there, or Amazon wasn't there, you know, and even then I'd probably have contingency plans, being a business, you, you need those backup plans, so if Amazon, you know, crashed and, and burned and the business went down and eBay did the same, then you've got to have contingency plans, I mean, even if you, we never think of this now, but because the internet is so ingrained in us and computers are, but what if, you know, in 10, 20, 30 years, something else new comes out and it, the internet and computers are just wiped out. We we don't think about it because it's such, the internet and computers are so ingrained in us as people now that, you know, oh yeah, it, it would never happen. But as a business, every business needs these contingency. And if the internet, you know, completely got wiped out or whatever because of this new thing that came out, then I, what I'd do is go back to traditional dealing, which is, you know, going to auctions or whatever, going to car boots and and having a customer base and in your local area and driving around maybe to the affluent area areas with richer people and you go to them and say, look, I've got this weird, unusual piece. Would you like it? The odds are that richer people would like it because a lot of rich are a bit eccentric as well and, and they like their, the unusual pieces for display. Um, and, and I'd make money that way. I, I think I will always be a businessman with or without the internet. Um, I'll always want to do something similar to that. So yeah, that answers that question, those two questions. And Carp Fishing says, um, where are we? Uh, question for next week. If you can fit in, how much stock can you hold now, basically, is the question. Yeah, how much stock can you hold now? Um, I was debating this the other day, actually, with my mum. I basically, I've got about, what, well, I'll just explain what I've been doing this week. I've really been concentrating on eBay this week. I have done an FBA shipment, but I've been concentrating on eBay. I've got about 32 items listed, so not mega amounts, but it put me up to the numbers I'm comfortable with, if you like. I was on sort of like 120 listings and um, 130 listings, and now I'm up to like 160 odd, um, and I'm putting more on today. I'm hopefully planning to put between 10 and 20 on today. Um, so yeah, um, I, it's put me up to the numbers I'm, I'm more comfortable with, but at the moment my aim is to get to about 180, maybe 200 and then stop uh, and maintain it. See where I'm at in my storage. See whether I can put some of my unlisted stock in the garage uh, or the shed if my mum and dad let me. And then that would mean um, I could put more listed stock in the room. And I think 
the amount of stock I could hold if I did that was would be probably about three, three fifty items, three hundred fifty three. Yeah, about that, depending on the bulk and the size and stuff of the items. Um, but yeah, I'd say how much stock can you hold now? At currently, probably about two fifty. But if I put my unlisted stock in the garage or shed, about three fifty. So that's not too bad. Um, he also asks. Um, I've seen I've seen you say you had one fifty ish items on eBay. Do you think you could get this up to five hundred plus? Um, maybe in this house I don't know. Um, and the only way I could do that is by having. If you've seen my um, older videos, I used to have stock in these cupboards and up there on top of a wardrobe and under my bed. The only way I'm going to get up to five hundred is without taking up loads of space in the garage and putting all my listed stock down there and that getting all messy. The only way I'm going to get to 500 is putting it in here again because when I had it in here I had two, 200 items and if I could get 300 in there then that's 500 but then it's spread over two rooms and it's a bit messy and you know but um, there's ways around it. My mum's talked about, we've got a shed, my mum's talked about getting rid of that one um, she'll she'll put some money to a shed and I'll put some money to it um, or the other option is my granddad uh, used to be a joiner um, so we could basically get a, a run down shed and then he could like do it up um, and he wouldn't really charge us anything anyway because um, he's still quite physically fit for his age um, and he, he'll probably be happy to do that so that's an option so I could then have a shed like Sam does um, I don't know sort of what the sizes would be, something like 16 by 8 foot, some, something along those those lines. And I could probably get sort of around the four to 500 items there, in there. So there's definitely ways around it. I've tried to think of it in different ways. Um, so yeah, I could, but to answer your question, I could, but it would be hard. Um, also, any update on your FBA progress so far? Yes, as I said, I've sent a... Sh or a Actually, yeah, I don't think he's getting here. He's not going to be here anyway, it's only 9.19. I uh, scheduled it between 9 and 1, because the lowest you can do is 4 hours, but I want to go out um, after 1, so, um, yeah, so that's why I scheduled it for him. But, um, yeah, so I've, I've got another shipment downstairs waiting to go in. I've got 102 items up there at the moment. Um, I did do a sales update on FBA, but I, so I don't really know why I'm doing this, but, um, yeah, so I've got 102 items. When this other one goes up, I'll have 150 odd, depending on what's sold and stuff. Um, I've got some really nice higher value items. I think this this is the shipment now, my, my fourth shipment, where I'm really homing in and, and knowing the flaws and knowing what I did wrong the first few shipments. And now I'm saying to myself, right, let's get this right this time. Let's get the higher value items up there, let's really look at sales history, sales rank. I was looking at sales history and sales rank, but I wasn't as clued up as I am now. Even even like three weeks ago when I first started, I, I was not as clued up as I am now. Um, so I'm a lot more clued up on that. So I think when this box goes live and, and the weeks that follow, it'll be really good and I think I'll see some great sales. I've got a few higher value items on eBay, uh, a few high value vintage board games that you may have seen in a haul. Oh no, actually, so I'm adding the haul onto this, the end of this video, so you'll see those. I've already got those listed. That was a haul back on Tuesday. Um, and yes, yeah, so I've done that, and um, video may be showing sales. Yes, I've done that as well. I did my FBA sales. I will do a sales update for eBay. Um, I don't know when, early Feb, because it's 28th of Jan now, so probably early Feb, I'll do a video on that. Um, I've got an indoor car boot, the same indoor car boot, um, runs every two weeks now. Um, so that's on day after my birthday, I think, Seven, yeah, 7th of Feb. Um, so uh, I'll probably do a haul for that. Hopefully I'll get some good items, but last time I got cream of the crop, um, because... I was in an hour before the dealers uh, setting up my own stall, so I just went around and basically cherry picked it. So I don't think I'll get like the real gems, but it depends how early I get there to queue up. 
but I need, I've said to myself, I need to get there half an hour before it opens, because even if you get there sort of 20 minutes before it opens, it, there's still a, a little bit of a queue, and I can see the regular dealers are in that little queue in front of me, and then I'm stressing out, I'm getting anxious, I'm thinking, oh no, whoa, whoa, they're going to get in, what if it's a really nice board game, or some sort of like sealed 20 questions or something, or... I don't know, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone board game or something like that, or Harry Potter seeing it right in front, um, right on the first stall or something, and then they see it, and I'm like, oh no, but yeah, that's what, that's the um, things you have to contend with when you're a reseller, you have to battle with your conscience, because if, they, if another dealer gets it, you've just got to say, well, they've got it this time, but next time, I'll get it, um, but the hard, that's a hard thing for me to do because I'm re I really get stressed when someone else gets the good stuff. But last week, I got the good stuff and I've had a really good week this week. So, um, yeah. So that just updates you. I'll add the haul on to the end of this video. Sorry it's going to be a long one again, but my next video will be a haul or something like that. And I'll keep it short for you. I promise that. If I do a haul, I'll keep it short the next video. Um, but I think a lot of you like the longer videos anyway, so um, it's not too much harm, but it takes me ages to upload them. It takes about oh, 40, 45 minutes sometimes to upload these videos. But anyway, so I will, well, I'll see you in about two seconds on the other side of this video, but that was me in the past, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hi guys, uh, it's Adam and is a couple of days um, after the car boot I did, the indoor car boot. Um, it's now Tuesday um, and I've just been to the charity shops and I've got a pretty good haul. Um, I just sort of was at the right place at the right time for a lot of things. Um, and yeah, just we seem to have some good stuff in. Um, so yeah, this is it. Um, I have, if you don't know what this is, it's Carnival Glass. Um, when I worked at the auction house, we had a lot of this in it. It's nothing great, sort of like a five or a piece you're looking at here, maybe even a bit less. Um, but they were pound each, so I'm thinking I'd probably put that on at like 12 99 something like that. So that's okay. Um, just wrap them up in a bit of bubble wrap and stuff, send them out in a box, that should be fine. Um, stay alive. Um, this was basically from the shop I got six board games from today, I think it was six, um, and then basically I said to her, would you like to take my name and number, um, I um, would be interested in, in taking any vintage games off your hands, so she's got my number now, um, and she basically said, yeah, I'll, I'll call you whenever we've got any in, so that's good. Um, paid up on this, £3. I paid up on a lot of the board games, but some of them are just diamonds, so um, I really don't mind paying up. Um, stay Alive, sort of like a tenner, may, may, maybe 12 if I waited. Um, so yeah, not great profit, but the other ones I got are, are better profits. Um, I just sort of picked that one up because I knew it. Um, so yeah, next, we'll go on to this. So this is a bit, still a bit of media. As I said, um, I am getting into more like media stuff. Um, I've just remembered that some of my, uh, this isn't actually all my haul, some of it's downstairs. Um, so what I will do is just finish off showing you these items and then I'll actually take you downstairs and uh, show you the rest of it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, see a little bit of media, PS3. Uh, I don't know what it's going to go for, five, six quid, something like that. It's not a particularly great title. Um, but it's Guitar Hero, people know that, so I just thought I'd pick it up. That was a pound. Understanding Owls, that is, I think it's 27 on FBA. Uh, good sales length, something like, I think it's 300,000 in books, so not, not too bad. Uh, another dog book. Um, just put these over here. Another dog book. I got one the other day at a car boot. It's actually over there. Breaking bad habits in dogs. Correcting bad habits in dogs again. Actually, pretty much exactly the same title. That goes to 10 on FBA. That one goes to 15. Um, I found that these like niche 
niche sort of animal books really do well on FBA. I'll just actually put this in my FBA pile because that is going for FBA. Uh, and then that one, I don't know, I think this was a tenner on FBA. Um, 20p that was. Oh, and that one was 50p. And that owl's one was 50p. Um, yeah, just these sort of vintagey looking books and sort of odd books really do quite well on FBA. Paint, Roses and Castles, this random, random title. 20 pence, and I think it's um, about a tenner FBA. Um, yeah, so that was those. I got Travel Monopoly for summer. I did pay up on it, paid a pound, but it'll go 6 99 7 99 in summer. So that's not too bad. So now we're getting on to a bit better titles. £3 for Risk. If I wait it out, I'll get 20 Um Or I could go for a quick sale and get 15 but I think I'll wait it out and get 20 so... Three pound into twenty quid is not bad at all. Um, and then the bottom one is something I've had before. Well, I've not actually had this version. I've had the uh, square box version, vintage downfall. I think this is 1970. 19, I think it might be nineteen seventy. Um, maybe nineteen seventy two, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, again, paid up on it three quid, but I know this goes for sort of between twelve and fifteen. Um, probably get fifteen if I waited a bit. Um, but, you know, for a fairly quick sale, 12 quid definitely. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking pricing that at 15. Uh, so there's a bit more profit in it. Cluedo, again, 2 99 probably looking 12 quid. It is the longer box version. I think this is 96, I think. Not 100%, but I think it's 96. These are the, the winners out of that bundle. Have. So all these board games I got from the same charity shop, um, and these were the winners. Uh, I paid three pound for it, for, uh, four pound for this Bermuda Triangle game. It is a bit of a bolo, but prices are all over the place on eBay. They're between about ten pounds and thirty five pounds, and these are sold items um, that I'm quoting you. So between about ten pounds and thirty five pounds. I'm going to price mine high at 30, uh, see what happens, so yeah, really good find, and as you can see, with all these it says checked on them, um, so as you uh, as you can see it says checked, and I asked the woman and she did did sort of say most of them were, um, were thoroughly checked, not just like a little bit of a scan over, so yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, I'm um, sure that these are all complete. So that was that one, that lovely, lovely uh, pickup. And then um, the one that was um, made made aware to me by uh, Ben Ben Fitzpatrick um, is MB Hotel, and uh, I, I paid quite a lot for this, actually six quid, uh, a lot more than I'd pay for a normal board game. And again, you can see the checked there, um, but as a lot of people will know, this goes for for between anywhere between 25 and I think 40 to 45 so um, yeah so that was a winner uh, six quid say, say I get 35 for it six quid into 35 I'll take that any day um, so yeah I'm happy with that and now I'll just go downstairs and show you the other couple of pickups so bear with me I won't stop the video there's no point Hello, I'm recording. Got something from the stairs you. I know. I'm coming to show people. What, what? Oh, on the stairs? Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, this is too dark. I'll just take these upstairs. Ooh. Sorry about that. Right, we're, we're coming up now. We're coming up. You got a little bit of a tour of the house there, so even though it was really dark. Um, as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm experimenting with uh, video games and video game niche. PS2, this is the, like, the green, I don't know what you'd actually call it, sort of green transparent type controller. Um, analog controller, that was £3 and it regularly goes between sort of 10 and 15 so I'm going to aim for 15 couple of sort of 
worse for wear Harry Potter books not too good um, on the sides and stuff but yeah they're not too bad 50p each for those and again a couple of my favorite books ever that I always bloom and get Jacqueline Wilson and a rather nice Harry does his worst Harry Henry does his worst uh, 15 book box set that was 3 99 so I paid up on that wherever it is Oh no, actually she took the price off, yeah. Took the price stick off, so um, I don't know about that, maybe 15 to 20. I've not researched that yet, but definitely a great, great day. Um, if I were to say expected returns, we're looking at, say, 35, uh, 30, so 65, 20, no, I'll go 15, so sort of lowest um, value on that, 15. Um, so sort of like 80, uh, 90, um, 105, something like 117, 27, so just round that down to 25, which is two, uh, 140, say a fiver, 145, uh, 152, we're saying that's 7, 12, so 164, 12, so 172, and, and then Harry Potter books and stuff are going bundles, so sort of, you know, a few quid in them, so probably, probably looking at about 175 to, to 200 quid, depending on prices and stuff, oh, I didn't do these, yeah, so, these two as well, so, uh, that's 10 and that's 10, so yeah, you're probably looking 200 quid. Um, if not a little bit more, depending on how prices change and stuff, I will add this into the end of the uh, Thursday talk. So, um, yeah, see you soon, guys, and uh, I hope you enjoyed Thursday talks. I haven't actually recorded it yet, but um, I'm sure it'll be a good one. So, yeah, hope you enjoy that, and uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. So, yeah, I will see you soon, guys.